Hello and welcome to this latest Wealth of Advice market update recorded on the 3rd of October 2024. Uh, Matthew uh, stepped in and recorded the last one, I was away on holiday um, and a lot has happened over the last few weeks since the last time I recorded an update. Uh, the last update I did, uh, which was early August, uh, we came on and might have um, expressed concern with what was going on in the world, there was lots of volatility at the time and thankfully there was no big crashes or market sell-offs. Um, July's been quite a flat month, August uh, was a very flat month. September was very negative for the first two weeks of it, but then re uh, responded very well. And we ended the third quarter actually in very positive territory overall, with most asset classes uh, doing very well despite the volatility and risk uh, that, that was across the world at those times. Um, earlier this week, we saw the uh, situation in the Middle East escalate, uh, and there had been a fear that that would cause a big market sell off like it did. Uh, when it actually all, all really kicked off. It was a year ago this week, actually, uh, first week of October last year. And October last year was a very, very negative month of markets. Um, so a combination of, of, of factors over the last few weeks has meant that there's been some volatility there. But the Federal Reserve eventually came through and started reducing interest rates. And that reduction of half a percent in the American interest rate has kick-started uh, a wonderful rally where markets are, are back buying, doing very well. US unemployment data had started to drift up from a low of 3.4% in April 2023 uh, to being around about 4.2%. So the US Federal Reserve had made it clear all the way through this year they would reduce interest rates once they felt economic conditions were weakening. Interestingly, yes, they've reduced those interest rates because, as I say, the unemployment figures are going up, but it's kind of one of the first times in history uh, I was watching and reading about this recently. It's the first time in a long, long while in modern history when they've started to reduce interest rates at a time when corporate profits are already uh, increasing. So you should see a very good um, period of stock market returns. If corporate profits continue to go up and interest rates go down, it could re result in, in, in uh, good, good returns overall. Obviously, the fear would be that those really high interest rate increases over the past two years still might have some time to bite and we might see some periods of volatility in the short term. Uh, across in Asia, Chinese stocks have done very well recently uh, as the Chinese Central Bank decided to cut its interest rates and Chinese stocks grew by 20%. So if you look at all the different portfolios that we invest clients into, they are spread far and wide across the world in different stock markets uh, but also uh, low risk asset classes are doing very well. If we now look at just what uh, global stock markets have done, if you look at the chart that you see on the screen right now, you can see uh, 2023 uh, was the year Jap Jap Japanese stock market produced the best returns, uh, followed by the US S&P. Well, so far uh, in 2024, the US S&P 500 is the best performing market of 2024. Uh, the UK FTSE All Share is down the bottom there, 9.9% year to date. Um, but then if you look at the quarter three, when I said we've had some volatility, uh, the Japanese stock market has been the worst performer. FTSE All Share sits somewhere in the middle. MSCI World Index, Asia excluding Japan up 106 and that obviously reflects the fact that the Chinese uh, market jumped so well. And I have said a few times on this uh, market update that once China fully emerges from its three-year lockdown that it had, starts getting its economy back in check, back in order, which obviously President Xi is hell-bent on doing, that we should see some good growth come from China, and that may help the uh, rest of the, uh, the world markets and other things do very well. So we're definitely keeping an eye on all areas, and we do have client portfolios spread uh, what we think in the right places, as well as when we look at where Royal London, uh, Prudential, uh, Legal in General, HSBC have their portfolios. Um, they are, as I say, taking a much more global approach than they've ever done. <coughs> um, and that brings us on nicely to the next part where we're going to talk about the UK, our home market. Uh, the current government's been in power for what, four months or so now. Uh, UK stocks rose over that period. Um, albeit um, not as much as the first few weeks when we thought oh, things are going to re be really well. The UK FTSE 250 did very well. It's still doing better than the FTSE 100. Um, the Bank of England chairman uh, had been a little bit cautious on what he was saying about UK interest rates. Um, and although they did reduce interest rates uh, July to August, they kept them on hold at 5% last month, which disappointed a few people. But just this morning, Andrew Bailey has said uh, they should be able... Uh, to start reducing interest rates gradually over time. It's vital that inflation stays low, but that was seen by most, and certainly the pound fell quite heavily today. It was seen by most that UK interest rates are gonna come down quite a bit uh, in, in the coming months. Uh, we now put on the chart of where UK interest rates sit overall. 
Uh, I don't think we're ever going to get back uh, to those zero percent interest rates that we saw in 2020, certainly not anytime soon. So if we are to see a reduction in interest rates, what's the most that we're going to hope for? I would be guessing, I would be predicting, looking to see if we can get somewhere down to 4% in the next 12 months, that might be as far as it goes. Anything less than that down into the threes, which historically is a long-term average uh, uh, interest rate for the UK economy, uh, I think you'd have to go somewhere for the economy to be not doing very well for them to pull it down that far. But if they get inflation at the, the, the headline figure that they want to keep at around about 2 percent 2 then you should see interest rates around about the 4% over the long run, which is hopefully means we've got a good economy. Uh, we now look across uh, into Europe. Uh, European stocks rose over 1.6% in the last quarter. Um, and again, its economic data was showing that this sluggish nature of the Eurozone recovery um, it continues. Germany very reliant on its manufacturing sector, but that's dragging it, so it's weak. China's demand of, of German and European products has been weak. And obviously, as China exports increase, like I say, they come out with their three-year lockdown a year and a half ago. So Chinese exports are on the on the on the march again. That has a negative impact on Europe. So Europe's definitely one to keep an eye on. Not as positive as what um, some people uh, may have been thinking about previously. Um, we attended the Invesco Perpetual uh, seminar a few days ago and it was some interesting facts that came out of that. Um, the 60% of asset managers say the risk of a US recession um, is still a big concern. However, 25% believe that economic data remains strong. So that's not a very, very pessimistic thing. Overall, it's optimistic and that picture is getting better. Inflation is still the second biggest concern in the world after geopolitics. Geopolitics obviously being what's going on, uh, Russia, Ukraine, what happens with China, America, but obviously what's happened this week, escalated Iran, Israel, um, uh, across in the Middle East, that is a definite big uh, concern uh, and we'll keep an eye on that. But we did speak with a fund manager down in London a few months ago who said, all the negative stuff regarding geopolitical uh, risk has been priced in already. Yes, if something really extreme were to happen, then you might see some reductions. And it was interesting that after uh, Iran started firing those missiles uh, across uh, the other night, that markets didn't collapse the day after. The oil price down to $75 a barrel has stayed the same, whereas this time last year, when the conflict started, uh, oil price shot right up. So the oil price down to $75 a barrel, that's good for inflation. Uh, I noticed when I went to fill my car petrol the other day or diesel the other day, it was 130 something. Uh, and my wife told me that the Morrisons down in Hartlepool is down to 131, 132, or whatever. So that's good that it's starting to come back down because that's what people notice most the price of food, the price of gas and electric, price of petrol and diesel. So let's keep inflation low and everyone will be happy because everything went up so much in the last couple of years. So we now come to the end of the presentation where we show you how markets have been performing over the last years. Uh, if you look at the first chart on the screen now, market performance year to date, as you can see, kind of what I explained, um, the S&P 500, the biggest market in the world where your Microsofts, all the big companies in the world are across in America compared to other places. That's up 16% so far year to date. Uh, FTSE 100, 10.57. Uh, uh, we've put in there for the first time the FTSE 250, which is UK small and medium cap companies, which are expected to do well uh, if the UK were to cut interest rates. And that maybe is a true a barometer of how UK companies are performing because the FTSE 100, as we've said previous times on here, is dominated by companies that earn money overseas, although they're on the FTSE 100, they may earn most of their money overseas. We now look at the performance over one year. So instead of from January the 1st, full 12 months, FTSE 250 is better than the FTSE 100 on that, but the S&P 500 up 23% over one year. Push that over five years, S&P 500 dominates 94% uh, over five years. It's absolutely huge. FTSE 100 hasn't done bad over that period of time. It's still up 40%, but thankfully, and I've said this previously, we're getting closer to that uh, COVID uh period of, of March, April 2020, which everything fell off a cliff. It's kind of been in the rear view mirror and we move on from that. Uh, so a hell of a lot has happened over that five year period. And as we say to our clients, you look at this, you have an investment portfolio, you have a retirement drawdown account, whatever it may be, you invest for the long term and you will be rewarded for following the following the road all the way through. Uh, you don't panic and cash in at the worst points. You are invested because you have that attitude to risk which suggests you can be invested. And as I say, the longer you invest, the better the returns will be.